Welcome back to Web 2.0.tv. I'm Thomas Tucker, and I'm here with Amanda Justice Nutt from Cap Gemini. Amanda, how are you doing today? Good. How Thank are you? Thank you so much for taking the time to visit Thank with you. us today. Thank you. Uh, I know that the Unitech Trade Show has you running around pretty much crazy, but yeah. uh, I appreciate you taking the time. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. Business, business no problem. Schedule. Um, you work with almost every major enterprise level company in Austin. I mean, if I could yeah. name any one, you've probably worked with them. From probably. Dell to Apple and all kinds of other ones. The Austin marketplace has a very unique dynamic as I understand it. What can yeah. you tell us about this local community and how different it is from other development communities in the world? Well, it's very different. It's it's a, I would say, you know, if you look at the, the landscape of Austin, you have five companies that are over a billion dollars. You have Dell, Temple Inland, um, you had that are headquartered here. Whole Foods. Um, you have. Um, I'm trying to think of the uh, Freescale and AMD. Those are the five that are over the billion dollar marker. Right. And once you get to the billion dollar marker, it jumps to the 300, 400 million range. So there's a big gap there. So the market is very, very different. What you see here is a lot of companies moving their headquarters here. Applied okay. Materials, Google's expanding here, Microsoft's building a huge data center here. They see the appeal of the marketplace mainly because of the development skill set, the, the wonderful UT University that we have here. So you're seeing a lot of growth in the market now. Um, so I, I, we just heard, I just heard uh, this morning that Borland was moving their headquarters here out really? of California. So it's a, it's a very different landscape, but it's growing. Um, there's a big gap between the large enterprise and the smaller organizations, but which makes it very unique uh, compared to most of your major cities like Dallas and uh, San Francisco, Cupertino area. But uh, I am very happy with what's happening in the community here and uh, the play that we're getting from Absolutely. larger companies that want to move here. There's a lot of talent coming out of UT a and lot of obviously talent. a lot of companies that are re, yeah. uh, relocating here. It's I know. very appealing to live in Austin. Absolutely. So it's, it, I never have a problem getting a consultant to want to move here. Well, there's a great uh, quality of living, cost of living yeah, balance absolutely. here in Austin. So absolutely. it's not that hard to bring talent here no. and show them the value Very of, of life in Austin. Yeah. I know Google recently opened an office here. They hired one senior uh, engineer uh, and a hundred, I think, uh, lower yeah. level engineers. Um, how are they planning on interfacing with Google, you know, mothership? and? Uh, like, I know there's a very interesting relationship with uh, companies in and of themselves here uh, in between each other. So yeah. how is that going to uh, affect the dynamic here in Austin? I, I, I think you're going to continue to see the market grow and you're going to continue to see traffic get worse and worse. Um, <laughs> I mean, that's that's the, the <laughs> negative aspect about Austin and the growth that we're ever uncovering. But yeah. I mean, Google, you know, California's market is saturating. Yes. You know, it's becoming more and more difficult to find uh, great consultants, great developers that want to live in a very expensive state. Yeah. Uh, it is, cost of living here is great. So one of the things that you see in, in businesses to do business here is very reasonable comparative to California, obviously. But um, I think the dynamics of companies like Google is their appeal is they get a fresh market, they get fresh consultants, they get fresh developers, and you know obviously they're doing a great job at reaching out uh, into you know in a tech and sponsoring this wonderful event and Absolutely. being very involved in what we're trying to do and um, you know their their big expansion is going to happen in March I believe March of 08 uh, in terms of their offices growing here but uh, yeah, I think you're going to see more and more of that and applied materials like I said is going to be moving here and that's a, a huge corporation that's going to be headquartered in Austin that's big news for our city and right. very excited about uh, what's happening there with applied and so I, it's a it's a neat time for Austin as these larger kind of behemoths uh, organizations move into town and of course create new jobs yeah. uh, open up new opportunities especially for local developers what is that going to do to some of the local smaller develop uh, development firms and like some of the smaller gaming development firms yeah. that are here are they going to see uh, some losing some talent over the next couple of years or a tighter I think, marketplace? I think potentially. I, just, I think we're just going to keep on growing and we're going to get more and more appeal from people that want to move here. Growth is good. Absolutely. I, I don't think there's any negative aspect behind that. So, um, you know, we we've, hopefully our infrastructure of our city can support it. That's my biggest <laughs> concern. The Silicon Hills aren't doing too bad, I yeah. guess. Yeah, we're doing good. <laughs> well, um, one of the things that we, that we spoke about before uh, you came on today was that the IT industry traditionally has been kind of the male stomping ground uh, for the socially inept, but uh, you know, very <laughs> mentally acute, uh, you know, yeah. masses. 
Um, however, over the last couple of years, women have really started to come into their own yeah. in, in the IT field. And I know that you participate in a lot of nonprofit organizations and a lot of fundraising, um, but a lot of you, you pay attention to uh, yeah, kind of the big female players that are coming up and affecting the marketplace. What are some of the major advantages and contributions that some of the prominent women in IT have, have made over the last couple of years? And who are some of the people that are really poised to, to take us to the next level? I mean, oh, very that perspective is, is invaluable and it's going to change a, a lot of what the male dominated industry has thought over the last couple of years. I, you know, I'm kind of, I'm kind of torn. I think there's some positive and, and negatives to what you just said, but I think mm. for the first part, um, I just am a big believer in diversity in the marketplace. Absolutely. And I think it's key for an organization to have senior leadership uh, and diversity in every team uh, because different people offer different perspectives. I mean, women are going to offer a perspective, foreign nationals are going to offer various perspectives, and I think it's critical that you have different types of cultures represented at, in every team, and especially at the executive level. Absolutely. Um, so I see companies, uh, certain companies in town doing a very, very good job at diversity in, in their business, and, and, and they're reaping benefits from that, I think, internally. Um, so, you know, I think the day in the age of women, women's issues is starting to become this non-topic and it's Agreed. more around finding bright, bright people and building diverse teams. But on the other note, we also are seeing a, a, a huge shortage in women going to school in computer science and engineering right. degrees. Right. 2005 to 2006, there was an 11% drop in women that graduated with those kind of degrees. And um, well, one of the, the big, they're, they're, I'm not, not sure what the rhyme or reason is. I think one of the big things that I am doing in Austin is, um, you know, providing scholarships for women that want to uh, go to school uh, with computer science and Amazing. engineering degrees and catching these young girls in middle school and showing mm -hmm. them the advantage. Mm -hmm. But I think we're in a gap right now. I think it'll pick back up because my, my four and a half year old knows the computer more than <laughs> I do. And she could code if Amazing. she wanted to. She's just right. So. We're in an age where technology is just part of us every day. Absolutely. And I hope we see that shift. Right now we're kind of in a downturn and I'm really focused on trying to get those middle school and high school girls interested in technology and pursuing uh, computer science degrees because to be successful as a woman, you have to educate yourself, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and that's that, that's going to be key for them to be successful. Well, over the last year, we've seen a lot of articles in Business Week and Forbes that uh, you know say that, that women are really early adopters of technology in terms of gadgets. They're tending to spend uh, yeah. a lot more money these days on plasmas and, uh, yeah. and on mobile phones. I'm getting PDAs. ready to buy a plasma. I'm registering for the plasma that's here. <laughs> see if you can get it for free before <laughs> no, you have to I'm go to Best to go, Buy. Hey, I want that. Picture. What can I do? <laughs> what I mean, being an incredible success yeah. in yourself uh, uh, in this market. Place. What would you say to a lot of these younger women who are really involved in these social networking platforms like MySpace and Facebook yeah. and they, they use them heavily, it's a big part of their communication with their friends and, and especially as they graduate college and keeping in touch with yeah. each other, but what would you say to some of these younger girls uh, to perhaps encourage them or, or to give them a little guiding light on where to start, where to how to, how to proceed in getting into this industry to, to re-elevate that 11% yeah. drop? Um, I think the key is education, mm -hmm. I, and I am a big component in, 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 in education and the impact that that can have for you for the rest of your life. So mm -hmm. education is number one. Mm -hmm. um, and I think another thing too is surround yourself by people who do know the field. Right. You know, have right. mentors and uh, collaborate with your other female counterparts and go to association meetings like the Association for Women and Technology of Austin and, um, and visit and, and network. and. I think the key to be successful is surround yourself by successful people who have been there, done that, Absolutely. Uh, to avoid mistakes. And, and as far as utilizing technology, I think be careful. You know, have some integrity about how you're promoting yourself mm -hmm. because things can come back to haunt you down what the you're road. Sharing and, what you're not. Um, and, and be cautious there. Um, that you know, I, I think for the young girls, just be careful online. That's Amanda Justice Nutt, an incredible force in uh, IT and in the IT industry here in Austin today. Thank you so much, oh, Amanda, for visiting welcome. with me today. We'll be right back with Web 2.0 TV.